So this is FIS 2320 Computing 2, and this is the second unit on the series of video tutorials on debugging. Um, and if you're a lead student registered on the module, you'll be able to download the workbook and the version of these slides as a PDF from the uh, module site on Minerva. So the first part of the unit, I'm going to give you just a very quick overview of uh, Python exceptions. Um, and then we'll go on and talk about some examples of particular types of Python exceptions and when you get them, what they mean, um, and therefore what you might do to try and correct for them. So in Python, an exception is what happens when something unexpected happens. Um, so something happens that breaks the usual flow of execution of the script. So that could be some sort of error, but it can equally be something like the user pressing control C to try and, or, or using the interrupt command to try and uh, interrupt the program. When uh, Python detects that an exception happens, it stops what it's doing and it looks to see if it's inside a try except block. If it isn't, then it transfers out of whatever function um, it was currently executing uh, into the calling function, and again tries to look to see if it's inside a try except block. And it keeps on doing that, jumping out of each function in turn and trying to see if it's in a try and accept block, and so on, until um, it eventually either finds a try and accept block or it gets to the top level of the program, at which point it just decides it can't go on any further and it will stop and give you some sort of trace back. If um, it does have a try and accept block in, that it's found, then it looks at the various accept lines and see if it can find one that matches the type of exception that's happened. And if it can, it then goes and executes whatever code is under that exception. So um, Python understands that um, some sorts of exceptions are more specialized versions of a more generic type of exception. So the most general type of exception you can have is just called exception. Um, actually, strictly speaking, there's a, 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 a even more generic type of exception called a base exception. But for the things you're going to come across day to day, the most basic type of exception is a, is a just called exception. And then within that, there are certain sub types of exception um, that have more specialized meanings. And in fact, this builds up all the way down. So you might sometimes encounter maybe an index error or a key error in your code. And actually, index error and key error are both examples of a more general type called a lookup error. And then lookup error is itself a more specialized example of the most general case, which is exception. So when you use your try and accept, um, it will go and uh, if it see, comes across an accept which matches a more general type of exception than the one it's trying to deal with. So if in our example we were um, we had an index error and we had an accept lookup error, the Python would say, oh, that's OK. Index error is a type of lookup error. We'll go and go with that. So what that means is that um, you want to be a bit careful when you write your accept clauses that you are trying to identify the most specific type of exception that you actually want to deal with. Because if you just always do accept exception, then inside that code, you've somehow got to work out what to go and do if it's a, an index error or a runtime error or a value error or any of these other type of exceptions it might be. But if in the accept line, you put down exactly what it is you want to match, then you're going to be more confident you know exactly that bit of code is having to deal with this particular type of a uh, of a uh, an error situation so generally speaking it's a really bad idea to have accept exception and in fact um some python automatic python style checkers will pick you up and 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 decide that that's a bad that's an error that trying to uh, catch an exception like that is almost certainly always not what you want to go and do if you want to create an exception yourself in your code, uh, then you can use the raise keyword. And you can use raise to go and generate a new exception. 
And so one of the things you might commonly want to go and do and where you might use this is if you can identify that there might be a, a particular type of exception that happens under some circumstances in your code and it's going to be uh, rather unhelpful to tell the user the exact exception that's happened, you can work out and give them a more helpful uh, message. So as an example, here's a kind of uh, rather trivial example. Um, so this is some code that's trying to um, take some total number and divide it, work out what the share for a given list of users might be. So what we go and do is we do the sum total divided by the length of the list users. Now, there's a problem here that if there's no users specified, um, so if users is an empty list, then len users will be zero, and what we'll get is a zero division error. But a zero division error doesn't really tell you what the problem is. The problem is you haven't got any users, um, not a zero division. So in this code here, what I do is I have that, that problematic sum with a inside a try block, and you capture it with the except, you pick up the zero division error, and then I say, ah, oh, well, I know what's caused the zero division error in this case. So I'm going to raise a value error, which is a more appropriate type of error to have, um, and give it a, a more useful error message. There's nothing in the list of users. So that's actually reporting back to the, the operator of the program what the real problem is, not kind of what the slightly obscure um, uh, message you get when you actually hit hit the actual problem. So this is an example of using raise to go and translate an error message into a more friendly and uh, more useful one. 